Hello Starbounders, and welcome to the first episode of Arkin's Lab. I'll be your host, Arkin. Not surprising, I mean, it will hardly be suitable to call this Arkin's Lab if it was assisting student here given the tutorial, but I digress. In this series, we'll discuss one of my favorite aspects of Starbound, wiring. At first, in order to guide those of you who are new to the concept, or even to Starbound as a game, we'll discuss the basic mechanics and principles of wiring in the game. Once that's out of the way, and everyone is more or less on the same page, we will start discussing advanced ideas in wiring. From useful tricks to complex designs, and even trying to implement your own suggestions, should those occur. So, with that in mind, let's begin from the top. Today's topic is going to be Wiring 101. In this episode, we will break down the mechanics of wiring in Starbound. What are wire items and how to interact with them, how to create and destroy wires with the wiring tool, and the meaning of input and output. I realize I'm probably not impressing any of you with the above description of this episode, but I'm merely trying to be as thorough as possible for the benefit of the one person who might actually find this helpful. I will try and clear the basics as quickly as possible so we can get to the interesting stuff sooner than later. Now that introductions are out of the way, let's get to work. Let's start with wire items. Now, all wiring in Starbound is done through the wiring tool. It's brought up by pressing T. The wiring tool is an unlockable item obtained from your ship's computer after purchasing your second ship expansion in the main uh, storyline of Starbound. Equipping the wiring tool allows you to see existing wires in your surroundings, to create and destroy them, and to interact with wire items. Now, uh, for future references, we will refer to every item in Starbound that can have a wire connected to it as a wire item. It's an important distinction to make, as there's a family of items in the game that are called wire devices that don't actually include every wireable item in the game, such as doors. Wire items are easily identified by pulling out your wiring tool. Each and every wire item in Starbound will have a node, or sometimes multiple nodes, that are either red or blue, and indicate points where your wiring tool can connect wires to the device. These items are unique to every other item class in the game, in that a single wire item can actually exist in two states. You can dub these states on and off, or open and closed, or even one and zero, if you understand binary. The differences between the item's two states usually affect its properties. Lights can be turned on or off, doors opened or closed, and in some cases, the change is less physically apparent. But we'll discuss these examples uh, further down the line, where we get to logic gates in the next episode. Next, let's discuss wires. As stated before, the wiring tool allows you to interact with wire items. This interaction involves connecting one node to another by creating a wire between them, or disconnecting an already existing wire. In order to create a wire, with your wiring tool equipped, you generate a wire by walking up to a node and left-clicking it. This will draw a red line emanating from the node to the tip of your wiring tool. At this point, the wire is still not set. The indication of the wire is purely cosmetic. In order to finalize the wire, you must connect the other tip of the wire to another node. It is important to note that nodes of the same color cannot be connected. A connection can only be made between nodes of different color, a red and a blue. However, there isn't a limit to the amount of connections you can attach to a single node. As with this example, where one red node is connected to several blue ones. Once a connection is made, we can say that the items are correlated. We will elaborate on correlation in the third chapter of this video. In the meanwhile, let's discuss how to disconnect a wire. By right-clicking, your wiring tool automatically disconnects all wires connected to the selected node. When disconnecting a pair of nodes, it's important to carefully pick which one you will right-click. 
Otherwise, you may find yourself having to restore a lot of connections just because you wanted to disconnect one. And now, finally, input and output. We've talked extensively of nodes, their colors, and the connections between them. Now let's discuss their actual meaning and purpose. From now on, we'll refer to the red node as the output node, and the blue node as the input node, in accordance with their roles. You might recall that earlier in this video I've mentioned that every wire item in Starbound has two states. Let's call them on and off for simplicity. The purpose of the nodes on the wiring item is to allow the device to communicate with other devices, either affecting their state according to its own, or determining its own state according to theirs. This is where the input-output nodes come into play. The output node transmits the item's current state, while the input node determines the item's state according to the incoming signal. Together, the two nodes enable correlation between the wiring items. One item, we can call it the master, in this example that would be the switch, transmits its current state on the wire to the other item. We can call that the slave, that will be represented by the light bulb. The light bulb state will be solely dependent on the signal coming from the connected wire. From here on out, the slave state will be synchronized with that of the masters. When the switch is on, the light will turn on, and vice versa. Notice how the wire's appearance actually changes according to the signal transmitted from the switch. When the switch is turned on, the wire becomes highlighted, indicating that it's live. When the switch is turned off, the wire becomes dormant again. This is useful when trying to debug more convoluted designs, as it allows you to follow the source of an unexpected signal, or lack thereof. Finally, I would like to make a quick distinction between output items that only have output nodes such as switches, input items that only have input nodes, such as the light bulb, and input output items, or I.O. items for short, that have both, such as doors. The interesting part about the latter is their ability to both receive a signal and transmit it to the next item in the connection. This allows you to create a chain reaction starting from the first item in the connection and emanating from the second onwards, and so on and so forth. As with this example, where pressing the switch opens the door, and the door opening makes the light turn on. In conclusion, what have we learned? We've defined what wire items are, learned how to use the wire tool to create and destroy wires, and distinguished between input and output nodes. If any of the above is still unclear to you, you can simply press the chapter in question to revisit it. I'll make sure to uh, link them accordingly. In the meantime, the best way to learn is by practice. I highly recommend you just go in game and test out different wire items and how they affect each other. It's also a lot of fun, trust me, I do it all the time. Well, that about sums up all the basics when it comes to wiring in Starbound. In the next episode, we'll discuss logical gates and how they enhance what you can accomplish with wiring in-game. If you have ideas for future episodes, a topic you want to make sure I'm going to cover, a wiring idea you'd like me to try and design, or just constructive criticism, which is always highly appreciated, then please leave a comment below. If you did find this video interesting and hopefully helpful, then please leave a like and consider subscribing to our channel for more awesome videos. Our community is open to everyone, so check us out at www.upbreakgaming.co.uk for more information. I'll include a link in the description below. Until next time, this is Arkin's Lab, signing off.